Hello and welcome to the channel. This is dev.log signing in. I know the devs are already signed in as well. So if you are new to the channel and you have an interest in web, app or software development, then essentially this is the channel for you. So do click on that subscribe button as well as the bell icon next to it and allow for all notifications so that you don't miss out on any updates or new content that gets uploaded to this channel. So in this video, I thought I would just talk about the three main resources that I made use of back in the day when I firstly started learning how to code or how to become a software, de software developer. YouTube is one of the best resources that you can use out there. It doesn't matter which topic you're looking into or which subject you're learning about. YouTube is one of the main resources that most of us use and most of us used back in the day up until now to learn how to program. One of the nicer things about learning to code through YouTube is that it is absolutely free. All you need is in an internet connection and a laptop or even your cell phone to watch any kind of course tutorial that you would have an interest in or any course tutorial that would be specific to software development. So not only is YouTube a free resource that you can use to improve and level up your skills in becoming a software developer, there are dedicated channels out there that focus a full course on a specific programming language, for example, like C Sharp. One thing about YouTube when it comes to its tutorials is that at some point you will find that you come across a channel that offers a certain tutorial maybe on a Java programming language or a C Sharp programming language. And in the middle of the course, you might end up seeing that the course is outdated. So whichever problems that you run into might end up being quite an annoying challenge for you, depending on who you are, because sometimes this is, of course, sometimes a great learning opportunity, because these are some of the challenges as well that you can end up facing when you are going through your journey in becoming a software developer. So when you come across those challenges, you might end up having to Google the error that you come across or whichever problem that you are coming across as you are going through those tutorials. And sometimes because you are maybe a beginner, it's not always the easiest thing to do, especially when you don't really have an understanding of where to start or how to actually put in your search. But either way, YouTube is one of the main useful learning resources that you can use out there. Now, another great learning resource is of course Udemy. And one thing I personally like about Udemy and other platforms that essentially offer the same kind of services as Udemy is that you get access to extra benefits. Now, for example, if you were to go into a YouTube course and you find that it is outdated and you come across a certain bug or issue with the course, it's not easy for you to get help on YouTube because the course creator is someone that uploaded that course maybe a long time ago is, and is not essentially while well keeping tabs on who is struggling with what. Now, when it comes to Udemy, what you get is actually someone that is going to assist you when you come across maybe a bug while you're learning the course. And the course creator essentially will help you out in resolving whichever issue you might have come across. But obviously that doesn't say that you should just, you know, run through the course and not expect to, you know, offer, not expect to give your effort into actually coming up with a resolution for that specific problem. Now, one thing about Udemy compared to YouTube is that for the course, you actually have to pay a certain fee. Now that fee covers the course in its entirety and of course the resources that you would be getting by enrolling in that course. Now this is something that is not done in YouTube. So YouTube is a free resource and Udemy you have to pay for the course. But normally the courses are quite affordable 
Um, depending on what day it is, I've noticed that during the weekends, the courses are a bit more expensive than they should be. And then during the week, they come back down again. So usually you'd find a course, for example, on C Sharp for around maybe 200 bucks which is quite affordable in my opinion. So if you are interested in getting good courses, Udemy is another great resources, resource that you can use. Another great thing about Udemy compared to YouTube is that once you complete the course, you actually get what they call a digital certificate. Now, this is something that you can obviously use on your LinkedIn or maybe Facebook. I don't even know if Facebook actually does that. But yeah, maybe this is something that you can put on your LinkedIn profile and, you know, spice it up a bit just to show any recruiters that you are actually trying or you are actually keeping up to date with whatever is happening around your world. Now, if you are someone that processes information a lot more easier through reading rather than through watching a video or listening to an audio file then books are another great resource that you can use and of course that I use from time to time to just sharpen my skills where I feel they are a bit dull. Books are also a great resource for learning in general and can help to cement whichever topics that you may be learning through a video tutorial, which is the approach that I tend to use. If I'm going through a Udemy course and I feel that there are a few things that I'm not too sure on, I normally buy myself a book on that specific topic and help myself sharpen those skills wherever they may seem dull. I personally feel like I get a bit more depth on the subject matter when I am reading through a book and I also find that I fool around more with the code when it's presented from a book versus from versus when it's being presented from a video and I feel that this helps me understand the language or the topic a bit more because now I get to see the responses that I get from maybe a request that I sent through the code versus the response that I am expecting, which can be fun and which can also take a bit of time. But at the end, you know, you get a, a, a bit more understanding to what it is that that specific topic is about. All in all, there's no better way to learn how to code than by actually creating your own personal projects. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. What matters is that you actually challenge yourself and see what it is that you think you know versus what you can actually do. Now, all these learning courses and all these YouTube tutorials are essentially like dots. Essentially, you're just placing dots all over a big platform. And once you start creating your own projects, it's then that you essentially start connecting those dots. So yes, projects are still a very, very great way to learn how to program. And it also looks good once you start putting your CV out there. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is that once you start connecting all those dots, it is then that you essentially start to get a clearer picture. And once you start to get a clearer picture, it is more and more that it becomes more 